Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So, um, I had, I don't know if it was Jane or Kate, one of the two, one of the two uh, sent me these wines a while ago. And uh, I totally forgot about them. I found them in the cellar. I'm like, where did I get these wines? And so I started, like, looking through my emails. I'm like, oh, they sent them to me. Um, anyway, so... I think this is, the this, this is the last of all of my free samples that I know of that I can remember. Because um, I'm pretty sure everything else in, in, my, in my cellar there is stuff I paid for. Um, or I acquired other ways, like from people, or whatever, but they're not meant to be review wines. Like they're not samples that somebody sent me. They're like, someone was, hey, just have this bottle of wine. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to do two wines today. <clears throat> and... Um, they're both from Portugal, so I'm pretty excited to try these wines. Uh, and they're both from an area called Alentejo, um, which I probably should have double-checked, but it, Alentejo is kind of, if I remember right, in the southern half of the country, under the Douro, if I remember correctly. Um, it's somewhat of an up-and-coming area. I know that there's been some promotion of it in the past couple years, you know, really trying to get the, the wines at Alentejo. Um, to really uh, uh, be more well known. So the first one we're going to do is the Monte de, and I'm really going to butcher that butcher, butcher this pecaguina, and I'm going to assume this little animal is a pecaguina, um, and it's from the uh, Herrada da Malhadina Nova. That's the winery. Um, it is. And it's a, it's the 2000, let me just put this on the back, 15 uh, vintage. Oh, right there. And it has five different grapes in it. So it has Toriga Nacional, 25% uh, of that, 23% Syrah, 22% Aragonez, and I'll come back to that, 20% uh, Alicante Boucher, come back to that in a second, uh, and 10% Camarillo Sauvignon. Uh, grapes were handpicked into 12 kilogram boxes and selected at the sorting table. Fermentation occurs in stainless steel lagares with temperature control and traditional maceration and also in tronchoconic vats. I don't know what that is. Um, partially aged for nine months in French oak barrels and then the rest is stuff I don't need to read. Um, so two grapes in there you may not be familiar with. Uh, Aragonez. I actually looked that one up. I'm like, what is this grape? It's basically Tempranillo, also known as Tinto Roriz. Um, and then Alicante Boucher. Um, you might have seen occasionally somewhere on the shelf, like Coppola puts one out. It's like in a kind of a hot pink bottle, or the label's kind of hot pink. Um, so Alicante Boucher is one of those like five red grapes that actually have red skin. Uh, not red skins, uh, they have red skins. Uh, red. Um, pulp. So you don't need to have skin contact to get red wine from them. Uh, and a lot of times Alicante Boucher is used to help with color uh, on wines. So, uh, but you should check it out uh, if you find one that's 100% like Alicante. <clears throat> uh, and this sells now on the um, on the website for these guys uh, or maybe it was some other website, but it was like listed as 20 euros, which is as of today, which is what the 21st of June, 2018, um, approximately $23. Okay. So let's check this out. A little bit of rosé left in there. So Portugal for a long time, uh, at least on the red wine side of things, has been really trying to um, promote its non-fortified wines. Um, 
because unfortunately, port wine, uh, um, port wine, uh, which call it, uh, consumption is down. I mean, sweet wines in general are down, uh, dessert wines. So, um, so these, not that this is a port wine house, it's not, but, um, the port wine houses have been trying to make more of their non port styles, uh, especially when it's not really a great vintage for port and they just, that they're trying to make money. But then you have other areas in Portugal that make wine and people just kind of go, Oh, I thought it was just port, uh, white wine. You have Vino Verde, which is in the Northern part of Portugal. Uh, that's at least a little bit more well known. So let's check this out. Pretty moderately, almost moderate plus, moderate plus on the intensity on the nose. Um, kind of spicy. A little bit of dried red fruit. Not quite smoky, but yeah, like there's like an earthiness, you know, an earthy component to it. Dried, dried wood. Touch of cinnamon to it, so on the spice. I call blackberry, raspberry, but on the darker side of things, more more blacker fruit than redder fruit. A little violet in there. Yeah, let's check it out. Good amount of stuff going on here. Um, everything I pretty much mentioned is there as far as the fruit, but there's a little bit more of red fruit now. Um, and I'm not gonna call it sweet, but there's a there's a um, it's not ripe fruit, but there's a there's a riper fruit component than on, on the palate than there is on the nose. But it's not by any means like oh this is like really ripe raspberry and blackberry. Um, but there's definitely that much to it. There's there's um, there's just a, a fuller body of it. Uh, the alcohol is, what was the alcohol? 14.5, so that might be adding to the somewhat apparent sweetness on it. Um, it doesn't have the, um, it doesn't have the um, sugar level, which is fine because it's, it is, it's dry, but it's not like bone dry. And it's, you know, not, there's really no sweetness to it. It's just kind of like that, there's a little bit of fruitiness to it, but there's a little bit of stemminess, a little bit of like the wood. Um, the cinnamon's there, a uh, little bit of earthiness is there. Maybe a touch of smoke. Um, it's, it's, it, this, is a, this is a wine that you need some meat, you need some food with it. Um, I mean, I can see, you know, you're out, you're out in the barbecue throwing down something and you're putting this with it. Um, it's very tasty in that sense. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. I don't ever drink Portuguese wine. I mean, it's just something that's just not on my radar very often. And this is really cool to drink this. I'm going to, I mean, when it comes time to enjoy this wine later, I'm going to totally enjoy this. And you know what, because of the Torriga Nacional, so that's what the basically one of the main grapes of port. I can kind of see that there's a little bit of that quality to it, um, but since it's only 25%, it's not like it's not like a huge amount. But even with port, they they tend to have a blend of wines. It's not just oh, it's just Tariga Nacional. I mean, basically almost half the half the grapes because the uh, Aragones the Tinto de Ruiz, they're half, almost half the grapes are pork grapes anyway. I like it. I got a lot. It's like 23 bucks. Not, not terribly expensive. I don't really want to pour the rest of it out, but we're going to move on to wine number two. All right. So wine number two, boom. You may wonder why I always, I try to always say wine number this, whatever. That's actually my audio cue to put the little, whoosh, the curtains. <clears throat> Because I, I didn't stop recording. 
I just it's just for separation. All right. Um, so this wine is the 2014 uh, Pietra. I was I, I keep wanting to say Pietra, but it's it's P I T N A P I E T. Uh, Pietra. Um, it's also from from the Alentejo. Uh, I'm going to read you. Um, the grape variety is Moretto. Another oh, and, and it sells for about twenty five dollars. Um, another grape variety I actually was don't even know anything about, and it's not like it's a synonym for like Tempranillo or anything like that, which is surprising since there's a billion synonyms for for that grape. Um, the Wikipedia entry was very small, um, and it says it produces uninteresting wines as a varietal wine. So it's the only variety listed. So let's see how good this is. Um, the, the whole story behind this, as far as how it's made, is kind of interesting. So uh, I'm just probably just going to go and just read through, uh, or I'm going to summarize some of this stuff. So um, the winery is actually called uh, Encostas do Alqueva. Uh, their mission is to expand investment in Portugal's wine industry. The goal is to foster the best traditions of the region, both in terms of grape varieties and style in its wines. Um, they have a team of quality winemakers um, and the benefits of a modern production team. Their seller, and this is a cooperative, the seller, the Adega Cooperativa de Granja, has been centered in Alentejo uh, for 60 years. So the owner uh, of Encostas do Alqueva is Jose Pitella, uh, or Piteria, maybe that's it, uh, continues to make his namesake clay jar wines. So uh, it's to preserve both an ancient tradition and the centennial vineyards that are at risk of disappearing. Clay jar wines are produced by primarily manual and artisanal methods. Grapes are distemmed and crushed by hand, and the must and skins are deposited into Talha, which are clay jars where fermentation starts spontaneously. Um, the vineyards devoted to Talha wines are planted on soil, soils composed of the ancient river Guadiana, uh, which is pebbly bed sediment in, in or the pebbly bed the pebbly bed sediment is rich in quartz stones, um, which it's like they they go right into it. it says allows for great drainage and deep rooting vines uh, combined. With old vine character of the vineyard, uh, the wines made from uh, this this Amarela um, Amarela Amarela Ha. Ooh, I probably butchered that, especially the accent. Vineyard achieve a level perhaps unequaled in Alentejo. Uh, fermentation lasts for three months, in during which a rodo, a tool similar to a squeegee, is used to rotate the wine in lees daily. Uh, the method is used both in red and white wines. Um, yeah, ba, 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 ba. and these clay jars are 2,000 liters, so it's like almost 10 Bordeaux barrels. Okay, so it's quite a bit. Uh, aging six months inside the clay jars with skins, and that's it. So let's let's get into this wine. Oh, right here, I, I saw a little, I was like, I didn't take any out, did I? I mean, it wouldn't have been enough for a sample. Boom. I'm just interested in trying a wine from the Moretto grape that I never heard of before. Like that's just gonna be another checkbox. Another grape I've never had. All right. And if it's good, I'm gonna wanna try to find more. Ooh, no, we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, earthy again. We got, um, come on, iPad, connect with the phone. There you go. I control the phone recording from the iPad. There's a, I use Filmic Pro. So there's an app on here, so there it goes. I really gotta get used to how to do the exposure on this thing, because now it looks like it's way overexposed. 
Um, okay, so Earthy was the first thing that comes to mind. Woodsy. Not a lot of fruit going on. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's pretty... I mean, maybe a touch of red fruit, but it's 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 like there's not a whole lot going on there. And this is definitely not cold. I mean, it's cool to the touch. Um, this is probably pretty much right at 65 degrees on, on the wine. So we're, we're talking like right around serving temperature. Easy, like, yeah. It's really all on the back end. It's like up front, kind of like there's really not much going on again. But there's like this somewhat cheese after taste. So it's probably from the lees, um, almost bread like, almost like a cheese bread. That's been like, you know, um, you know, baked. So you've got a little bit of like, you know, caramelization of the cheese. Like I totally could eat this with like something like, like a cheesy bread. And there's like a, not quite a plum characteristic, but you know, a, not quite raspberry, more of a cherry, I guess, um, a quality to it, but almost like a, almost like a jelly, but not sweet, you know, and it's not like it's an overly ripe fruit, like you're getting like preserved, like you're getting raisinated fruit, but there's, there's like a richness, richness to it. There's a spice characteristic to it. There's a wood characteristic to it. It's an interesting wine. Um, I can see where the Wikipedia entry is kind of coming from. It's not a wine that's got a ton going on. It's not a complex wine. It's somewhat Pinot Noir-like in the sense that it's... it's um, on the surface, there isn't a whole lot. It's it's light. It's lighter. The, it, it's not. It's slightly heavier on the tannins than Pinot, but I can see this being a little bit heartier, earthier um, Pinot Noir without all like the spice characteristics from from oak aging um, that you can get from Pinot from Burgundy. Burgundy specifically, not like just your general Pinot. Um, but that cheese quality, it's like it's it's pretty present, you know, on, on, on the back end. Like if you got pizza with this, I can see that. It might enhance the flavors of the of like if you have like meats on the on the pizza. Um, if you got just a straight up cheese pizza that you kind of overdone a little bit on the cheese, and kind of browned it out. I can see, I can see, you know, I can see totally rocking that wine with it. But I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, I definitely chalk it up to another wine that I'm like, I'm, I'm glad I've had it, and I'm going to when it comes time to to drink more of it, I'm going to try to remember all this and try to pair it with some food that might go really well with it. Hmm. pretty good all right i right, just so gonna do it for this episode as always you can click the links above to friend me up click the links below for information about these wines 
and uh, throw some duckets my way if you like, it would be helpful. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.